seen uh, Dodgeball mm -hmm. the movie. Ben Stiller has a cod piece and his yeah. workout shorts. <laughs> yeah. And he's like scooching up to the, the girl. Extremely attractive. That's an ankle. Yeah. <laughs> that makes for some good content. What would you like to talk about today, Seth? Oh, why don't we talk all about you? Oh, I love isn't, talking about me. Isn't that a 90s song? That's Toby Keith, buddy. So we're here today because we had done a video introducing you mm -hmm. and then the uh, quality wasn't that great. Yeah, and you were scared. You were a scared little boy back then. I think I probably had about six nosses that day too. So Yeah. So yeah, we never did anything with it. So now we figured, hey, you know, we probably should do that. So yeah. um seeing so I'm been doing a few videos now and people yeah. are saying who the hell's this guy? Well anyway, um my name's Kerry Dick. Um, um, started recently with Complete Performance. I guess it's not recent now. What, eight months ago? It's been that long. Well, it was December 1st, so. Been having to deal with you for that long. Mm hmm Wow. Yeah. Hmm. But uh, anyway, I came down here <laughs> to um, kind of run the R&D um, facility here. Um, it's going to be built out that we're actually sitting in it right now. We'll be doing R&D on new parts, parts that are unavailable. We'll be manufacturing some stuff. Also kind of take care of the facilities around the complex we have. Um, so yeah, anything it looks more from... like a storage facility right now yeah, versus this, a R&D this, this room's kind of uh, became an, becoming a catch-all. Um, we have another warehouse on the other side that has a bunch of parts. Um, Can't have anything nice. Well, it's going to take a lot of time, inventory, and all that stuff, and getting everything mm -hmm. organized. So by the time we host our truck show next March, this is all done. So, and people can kind of come in and take a look at what we're doing. My background, just kind of uh, always had a kind of a love for the Ford trucks. Um, I had a guy I worked for doing construction. I did construction for 32 years. Uh, finally had enough of that. But I had a gentleman I worked for that in 1995 um, kind of asked me to go pick out a, a, a new power stroke for him. So I went and, and picked him out a truck, and it was a 95 crew cab long bed, Oxford white, um, power stroke ZF5, and kind of fell in love with him from that point. Um, probably put the first 10,000 miles on that truck and always wanted one from that point on. They were just out of my price range, you know, being 20 year old kid with, you know. Hey, now they're out of my price range again. <laughs> yeah, they're still out of my price hey, range. Yeah. Um, but anyway, um, just kind of fell in love with the trucks at that point in time, always wanted one. Finally, and uh, I guess it was probably 04, I bought a 97 um, crew cab long bed, F350, power stroke automatic, um, and still have it to this day. When I bought it, it had 61,000 miles on it. It's almost 300 right now. Mm. So, um, I thought you were about to tell me it had like 62,000. Yeah, it was somewhere in there. No, like it had 61, now it's got 62. I wish. Yeah. <laughs> Because that sucker would be for sale right now. <laughs> so uh, that truck kind of progressed into multiple others. Um, we got. Okay, I guess, have just one. No, nah, I've got five. So <laughs> five. Um, I've got three. Yeah. So well, one's for sale. You'll get there, buddy, someday. Yeah, I'm trying to trying to bring that level down, not up. Oh, I'm yeah. I got to save them all. You know, the, the love of the trucks kind of progressed into the whole, you know, following on the Facebook groups. Um, I got into some of the Facebook groups and just started paying attention to what everybody was after. You know, the parts everybody was searching for. Um, and I would go out on the weekends and scour the wrecking yards and, you know, parts trucks around around where I lived in Boise. And, you know, I started selling parts online in the Facebook groups, which led me to connecting with Paul here at Complete Performance. Um, he had messaged me about a few parts. You know, I kind of got them shipped to him. Um, 
they had the first no BS show, no B, no, no. BS OBS show in Oregon, the first annual, and I actually OBS Solutions did. OBS Solutions May did. is OBS Solutions. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Um, I actually met Chris and Paul in person at that show for the first time. I'm sorry. Why? That's what led us together. I know. You, to... you even sent me a set of mirrors. You remember that? I believe I did send you a set of mirrors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever got them or not. I did. It took a long time. Yeah. Somebody kept them. So, uh, you know, just over the few years, um, kind of was going back and forth with Chris and Paul about me moving down here and going to work for them. And it was all kind of a joke. You know, we just kind of laughed it off. So, um here i guess is probably early summer of 21 um i finally had enough of construction and called up chris and said let's do it so here i am um the highlight of my day is kind of being a thorn in seth's side um that really gives me you know great joy very very great mm -hmm. joy it's it's my highlight of the day too yeah so mm -hmm. Um, and Caleb behind the camera, he's kind of the only one that actually does anything. But. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> that's, that's me. Um, you know, we're, uh, trying to put out some content for you guys, you know, just some fixes, some common things on these trucks. Um, you know, getting some of these trucks fixed up and maybe even some fun stuff. Yeah. Maybe even some fun stuff. Maybe. Oh, by the way, my, uh, my loving wife and loving daughter moved down here to Texas with me and they are so very understandable and I seriously appreciate everything they've done for me. She made you say that, <laughs> didn't she? She's no. like, if you don't say that. No. <laughs> Shh. If you don't say that, this is over. Help me out here, buddy. Uh, I don't know how she puts up with Carrie. Um, and I think the same of Danielle. Oh, probably just the latter part, right? The, yeah. How she puts up. With I don't know how she puts up with Seth, but I have to get back to work. I don't know what you fools are gonna. Oh, do. is that what you call it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sitting in the AC. Yes. With your hoodie on. Hey, it's how you hire on, man. <laughs> don't know what to tell you. Well, we're gonna walk around this shop here and kind of tell everybody, kind of what the thought is on this particular shop and the warehouse. And then we'll walk over to the truck warehouse and, and look at some projects over there. Uh, this will become our new studio. Um, we'll keep the, the cameras and all the filming equipment in here. It'll actually be kind of a podcast room too. So when we start doing podcasts again, everything will be filmed in here. Uh, pretty much kind of gut it, soundproof it, um, modernize it a little bit so, you know, have some some area to actually film videos, take pictures, that kind of stuff, so. Now, this is where, what I call the candy shop. Um, we're in the process of building this out right now. Um, we're gonna have liner panels uh, in here, um, be air conditioned, so that we can actually film some content without uh, me sweating like a pig out here. <laughs> we'll have a, kind of a workstation set up in this area, um, doing some of the fine work, um, you know, just kind of smaller type stuff. You know, if, if we're rebuilding a window motor or, or something similar to that. Um, I'll have a little platform up here so the guys can actually film and look down at what we're doing. Right here where the C350 is, We'll have a lift um, so that we can actually film some of the stuff we actually do in a lift. I'm not sure if we're gonna do the two post or four post here yet. More than likely, we're probably gonna put the two post right here. Um, over in this bay, we'll have a four post lift so that we can actually get underneath and you know, do some alignments. Um, you know, Caleb can get underneath there with me um, for some filming, but um, just it, it, it's all about giving you guys some content and information on these trucks. So that's what we're hoping to achieve. 
Uh, in the middle, probably just have a work table here, you know, standard vices and, you know, um, just the big table we can beat on things with. Over in this area, we'll probably, this wall, we kind of intended this wall to kind of be a display. We'll have some signage up there. Um, we have a lot of old gas station signs, um, you know, power stroke type signs, old Ford signs. So we'll kind of decorate that, that wall up for that. In this back corner, we'll have um, a welding station set up um, so we can actually work on some fabrication type stuff. Um, I don't know if we're going to actually put the plasma table in here yet, but we are going to get a plasma table so we can start, you know, making some prototype parts. Um, more than likely, every, all that kind of stuff will be on the, the big shop. But this area is kind of, the intention is just kind of having a clean install area um, to where we can actually film for you guys, you know, some of these you know, RSKs, um, you know, headlight assemblies, um, you know, dash work, you know, all that kind of stuff. We actually have a place where we can get good quality, you know, content out for you guys. So anyway, that's what's going to happen in here. Um, let's walk out here to the big warehouse. It's kind of a mess right now, just from moving around. Watch your step, Caleb. So right now, this has just kind of been a catch-all storage for everything until we can get fully set up. We've got seats galore. Um, just doors and fenders and wiring harnesses and Alcoas, I mean, you name it. So what the intention is out here, we'll probably have another some more storage out here, outside. All this interior parts will go into storage containers to where we can actually inventory everything, get it put out of the weather, um, you know, get everything stored so it's nice and dry and we can keep it safe. Out here will be the heavy work. Um, sparks flying, you know, grease, grime, all that stuff will be out here. Um, it will be enclosed. But, you know, out here we kind of intend to do all that heavy disassembly type work, um, cleaning, so that when it does go into the clean area, everything's nice and clean, there's no grease and grime on it, and we can keep that area clean for videos. So, anyhow. Now we're going to go over to the truck warehouse and kind of look at some projects we got going on over there. All right, so we're going to kind of look at some of our projects we got upcoming. Um, a lot of you have seen the, the roll along video, the series. Um, this thing's just, you know, we're, we're, we're using this truck as a series to kind of document some fixes, common problems. Um, it should clean up really well. Um, I'm really excited to see how this one ends up. Um, a lot, of, a lot of cool things we're going to be doing with this truck, you know, as far as the window motor repair replacement. We already did the dash video. Um, we'll do some other things with it. So uh, that's what this one is. The, a lot of these trucks are just personal collection trucks for the guys. Um, and everybody knows these two trucks. I've seen quite a bit of them. This one's going to be kind of a cool project. Um, this is a Brian Bronco. The only four-door Bronco that, that can be titled as a Bronco. Uh, most of your Centurions are, are trucks that have been changed over to uh, four-door Bronco, essentially. Um, but this is the only, Brian was the only one that actually used a Bronco to turn into a four-door. Um, so this is gonna be a cool thing. Um, they found this, I believe, in Arkansas, sitting on the sticks. Uh, Needs a lot of cleanup work, but um, it'll be a pretty cool project. Um, the two rail trucks are kind of going to be for the museum, you know, when it's done. Uh, they'll probably just get cleaned up. Um, I think it's pretty cool to have rail trucks. They don't, they don't just give these out to anybody. So be nice to see those up and up and running. And 
cleaned up. Um, we got a crew cab dually here that we're just swapping to four wheel drive. Um, one of the many projects. This one I'm really stoked to get on. This is Chris's F Super Duty four wheel drive, F Super Duty, I believe it has 17,000 miles on it. Uh, it was an ex fire truck. They got it out of Ohio, so it's got some rust issues, but um, he's converted it over to RSK already. It's pretty much going to be a frame off rebuild on this truck. Uh, a lot of you saw the video of this this truck. It was abandoned, just kind of parked in the sticks. Um, did clean up fairly nice. I um, think we're going to four-wheel drive swap it. We're going back and forth on whether or not we're going to use um, OBS front axle or do an 05 plus swap on it. Um, I'm, I'm trying to talk them into doing the coil spring front end. So that'll be a fun one to do some content on too. You know, Paul's Bronco, he's a little, little bit of work. He sits out here, got transmission leak. So one of the many things on my list of things to do. And then his other C350. Uh, that thing's always a constant, always something going on with this truck. So we're always working on it. We do a lot of, a lot of test parts on this truck. So, um, a lot of the new new parts that we get in we get tested out on this guy. Now, some of the other things that I do is, you know, they may get a good deal on a pretty clean truck. You know, I go through it, get it fixed up, get it cleaned up so we can resell it. Uh, this truck is one of those that's on the for sale list. A lot of these trucks aren't, aren't for sale. Um, but this is one of the ones that is for sale. Um, we've got a little transmission issue. We've got to get worked out on it. Um, once again, one of my many things to do. So, and then of course we always got inventory going on out here. Um, through that door is the shipping warehouse where all the girls get your orders out. Um, this is kind of their overflow area. So got a whole pallet of OEM grills and headlight bezels, and it's like dash bezels and all kinds of stuff in here. So this red and white truck really photographs well. It's dusty right now, but um, that's in a lot of our pictures and content videos and stuff. So um, that is a very, very nice truck. And then these are just a couple project trucks we're gonna get to one of these days as soon as this shop's up and running. All right, guys, thanks for joining us today. Um, let us know which one of these project trucks is your favorite. Um, we'll kind of try to focus on that a little bit more if you guys want to see it. Uh, we do have some more abandoned truck type videos coming up. Um, I think we're supposed to get, pick up another truck this week. Uh, you know, you guys out there supporting us is what's making this happen. So, you know, keep it up. Um, you know, we love making this content for you guys. Um, just let us know what you guys want to see more of, and we'll see you next time.